Well, hello and welcome back to Supposedly Fun. I am Greg, here today to do a book haul for the month of November. These are the new books that I brought into my library in the month of November 2019. For two months I have been promising that I would have smaller book hauls because I just can't really afford to keep buying books and I don't have the space, so many reasons. This month I finally pulled it off. I only have four books that I am adding to my library, so I'm feeling very accomplished about that. Let's dive right in with the book that I chose from the Book of the Month Club. It is by Susanna Cahalan, The Great Pretender. This blurb right here says, In 1973, a charismatic doctor convinced eight healthy people to commit themselves to mental hospitals. They had to prove their sanity to be set free. Their undercover mission would change our understanding of madness forever. So this book looks at mental health in America for the last 50 years and how it is treated, how it is misunderstood, how it is mistreated whole wide spectrum of things. It sounds really fascinating. I had been kind of hoping that I could get to this for nonfiction November. Obviously that is not going to happen. I probably will not be getting to it this year, but I'm looking forward to getting to it in 2020, especially since I have it around now that it's in my library. Uh, Susanna Catalan wrote a memoir. Let's see, uh, Brain on Fire, My Month of Madness, a memoir about her struggle with a rare autoimmune disease of the brain. If I remember right, I haven't read that, she was misdiagnosed as having a mental illness, but it turned out it was not that, it was something else. Um, so she has a really interesting perspective on this. Uh, obviously it is a very personal issue for her. So like I did last month, I'm going to read you the first sentences of these books and only the first sentences. So let's see what this one is. Psychiatry, as a distinct branch of medicine, has come far in its short lifespan. That's it. If you want the rest, you gotta go pick up a copy for yourself. Now, last month I had mentioned that uh, my Book of the Month selections uh, excluded a book that I then immediately regretted not getting because I started hearing really great things about it. Well, after I said that, Steve Donahue was kind enough to send me a copy of The Fountains of Silence by Ruta Sepetis, so now I have that one as well. Uh, and thank you, Steve. So this one, I think I talked about this before, but if you don't remember, uh, it deals with post-war life in Spain. Uh, in it, under the oppressive dictatorship of General Francisco Franco, Spain is hiding a dark secret. Meanwhile, tourists and foreign businessmen flood into Spain under the welcoming promise of sunshine and wine. Among them is 18-year-old Daniel Matheson, the son of an oil tycoon who arrives in Madrid with his parents, hoping to connect with the country of his mother's birth through the lens of his camera. Photography and fate introduce him to Anna, whose family's interweaving obstacles reveal the lingering grasp of the Spanish Civil War, as well as the chilling definitions of fortune and fear. Daniel's photographs leave him with, an uncom with uncomfortable questions amidst shadows of danger. He is backed into a corner of difficult decisions to protect those he loves. Lives and hearts collide, revealing an incredibly dark side to the sunny Spanish, Spanish city. Master storyteller Ruta Cepetis once again shines light into one of history's darkest corners in this epic, heart-wrenching novel about identity, unforgettable love, the repercussions of war, and the hidden violence of silence, inspired by the true post-war struggles of Spain. Uh, that right there, the hidden violence of silence, sounds really interesting to me. Can't wait to get to this. And let's see what the first line is. They stand in line for blood. That's intriguing. <laughs> and next is a book I have kind of talked about a bit on this channel before because it's Mr. Loverman by Bernardine Evaristo. Uh, you know Bernardine Evaristo because she recently co-won the Booker Prize with Margaret Atwood for the Testaments. Bernardine Evaristo won for Girl, Woman, Other. This is from her backlist. Because I'm interested in reading Girl, Woman, Other, I was looking at uh, books in Bernardine Evaristo's backlist. This one jumped out. There's another one called um, Atomic Blonde. No, Atomic Blonde is a movie with Charlize Theron, so it is not that. Um, let's see if it's here. Uh, Blonde Roots. <laughs> ah. Blonde Roots is the, another book from her backlist that had jumped out at me, so I feel like Bernardina isn't, Evaristo is an author that I am really looking forward to exploring more uh, and getting to know a little more intimately. Mr. Loverman is uh, about Barrington Jedediah Walker. He's 70, 74 and leads a double life. Uh, basically, he is married, he has children, but he has been sleeping with his male best friend, um, so it gets at the idea of hidden homosexuality, uh, and it just... I, I'm really looking forward to reading this can't wait to get around to it. Let's look at the first line. Morris is suffering from that affliction known as teetotalism. 
And finally, I got a copy of Song of Solomon by Toni Morrison. This is something that I will be buddy reading next month. Really looking forward to it. If you have followed along at all, you know that prior to 2019, I had only read one book by Toni Morrison, and that was Home, so not one of her uh, quote-unquote major works. Uh, after her death, I did read The Bluest Eye, which was her first novel. I loved it. It is one of my favorite reads of the year. I'm really looking forward to exploring her work even further. Um, Beloved will obviously be part of my Pulitzer Prize project whenever I get around to that. I'm really looking forward to this one as well. Incidentally, I had watched a documentary about Toni Morrison, uh, The Pieces I Am. It gave me such a great appreciation for her as a writer and as a human being. And, uh, and it even there were parts of The Bluest Eye that I kind of had problems with. And when I watched her talk about The Bluest Eye, they all made sense. Like those were deliberate choices that she was making. So I feel almost dumb for having uh, criticized them. Uh, I'm really looking forward to exploring her work further. I definitely recommend that movie. I think somebody said that it is streaming on Hulu. So there you go. I had gotten the DVD from Netflix. This one is, uh, I believe it is a kind of take on a coming of age story. It is about Milkman Dead, who was born shortly after a neighborhood eccentric, I'm going to turn it so you can actually see the cover, who was born shortly after a neighborhood eccentric hurled himself off of a rooftop in a vain attempt at flight. For the rest of his life, he too will be trying to fly, he being Milkman Dead, the main character. Let's look at the first sentence. The North Carolina Mutual Life Insurance agent promised to fly from Mercy to the other side of Lake Superior at 3 o'clock. And there you go. So those are the books that I have brought into my library in the month of November. If you've read any of these, I would love your feedback. I'd love to hear what you thought of them, uh, if you have recommendations based on them, if you think I should maybe hold off on any of them. Uh, hold off is a little tough, especially since I have a buddy read for that one scheduled. Um, so there you go. And then really quickly, so tomorrow is Thanksgiving. I, if you watched my last video, I mentioned that I'm going to be taking a long weekend off of YouTube so I can celebrate Thanksgiving, uh, decorate the house for Christmas. We always do that the day after Thanksgiving. So the next time you see me, there will be a Christmas tree right here and it's going to make me really happy. Um, tomorrow, I, I, so I'm publishing this on Wednesday. I'm actually filming this on Tuesday. I, I don't know if you can tell, I'm wearing the same t-shirt that I was wearing in the video I published yesterday. I just threw another shirt on top of it to, you know, the subterfuge of content creation, except I just told you. So consider that a glimpse behind the curtain. And uh, anyway, Thanksgiving is a really big holiday for us. We love it. My husband uh, has been a chef for most of his life. He uh, goes through phases where he leaves it to do other things, um, but he always goes back to it and it is a big passion for him. And my uh, in-laws are usually traveling on Thanksgiving, so we don't get to see them, but they are going to be home this year. So we're really looking forward to that. We've already started preparations. Uh, we've made the cornbread for the dressing. We've made the pie crusts. Tonight we have even more stuff that's gonna be going on. And uh, yeah, I'm really excited. And I hope you are too. So those are my plans for Thanksgiving. I'd love to hear what you have going on, what you're looking forward to. Tell me what your favorite Thanksgiving dish is. I always find that really interesting. What is my favorite Thanksgiving dish? It is actually pecan pie because my husband makes this insane pecan pie. It is so good. I was not even a fan of pecan pie until I met my husband. He really turned me around to it. It is so good. Traditionally, I actually, I'm a huge fan of cranberries. So, uh, uh, and again, this is something I came around to after I met my husband. He makes this cranberry relish to go on the turkey. Oh my God, it's so good. So those are actually my two favorite Thanksgiving foods. <laughs> one dessert, one kind of a side, but you know, go along with it, who cares? Um, if I had to pick another one, uh, something that would be actually a dish, uh, we have a friend who makes this uh, corn casserole. It's kind of like a corn pudding. It's really good. So I'm looking forward to that as well. So those are my favorites. I'd love to hear your favorites. I'd love to hear what you do to celebrate Thanksgiving, uh, especially on the weekend. Like I said, we don't do anything Black Friday. No shopping, nothing. All we do on Black Friday is decorate the house. We have already scouted our Christmas tree, so we're gonna go cut it down, bring it home. Uh, my husband will put the lights on outside the house, I will put the lights on the tree, and then we will all decorate, and it'll be really cool. We usually get two trees, so we can keep one downstairs where the television is, and um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to this weekend. I hope you are too, 
And if you have followed along <laughs> to this point of the video, thank you for that. It is always, always, always appreciated. If you're new here, I'm Greg. It's nice to meet you. I hope you enjoyed this enough to follow along. And um, I will be back. Until next time, happy reading.